All right, guys, welcome back to the episode. We are here for number nine of our Let's Play Nightingale series. Technically, it's 9.5. Some things might have happened to the video I was recording. Um, but you'll notice if you've been following along, we have a lot going on in the background here. When I last left you guys, we had just found this awesome little, little bay right here. And I was inspired to build us a, a base. And I went offline, I mean off camera, and gathered all the resources we need to build a, a base. And then built that with you guys. Um, recorded the whole video, did a whole episode, and then realized it wasn't, uh, my voice wasn't recording. So here we are. Um, so I went ahead and took everything out of the house. I also built us a portal back to the realm we were exploring. We'll hop through that here in a second. <clears throat> but, um... Yeah, what I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of just walk you guys through and show you, like, you can build out your whole base with blueprints and just kind of show you guys what we're about to build here real quick. Don't worry, I have all the resources, so um, we're going to build this, put our stuff in and decorate a little bit, and then kind of kind of get on the road and see what we're going to do today. So we do have some of the foundations left over, and then I made us a little nook here. If you can't tell, I like windows. And then it's going to be a, sh a small little two-story, and I'm going to build some walls to kind of block off augments from one another. And, uh, yeah, so let's put it together and see what it looks like. So I do have my chest over here with all our handy-dandy resources. I'm going to go ahead and throw these stones on there. Take another stack. Yeah, I know, we're heavy. Oh, also, one thing I pointed out when I was recording earlier. All right, that's a good chunk is so i'm gonna hit x real quick and show you guys the building limit so if i hover over this you can see it's 65 pieces out of 300 and that's per structure right so that's not 65 pieces at you know i mean 300 pieces in total everywhere it's just this structure itself has 65 build pieces this structure right here has 50. And you, if you look, I mean, they look like they're the same structure, but it's just because I placed foundations really, really close to this this little uh, port thing that we made. And then use stairs to kind of blend them together. So this is one way you can, like, manipulate the, the build limit a little bit and kind of take your base further. So if you want, you know, if you're the type that likes those sprawling bases, you, you can definitely do it. It's just technically you have to separate the buildings. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab our wood. Oh, good God, we can't move at all. Uh, all right, well, we're just gonna hobble on over here. Good God, Edith, can you help? I'm just kidding, I'm not giving you this wood. We know what you do with wood. I also, on Reddit today, learned the trick with companions. We're gonna keep her from, it makes me kind of sad because she is our wood lady. She loves her trees and it's kind of her, you know, everything about her now oh god that didn't even take hardly any wood i could have just took a stack out um or split a stack anyways but uh we're gonna take her axe away and the reason for that is because we can safely let her carry wood the trick is, is you give her a one-handed weapon and a torch and for whatever reason she counts the torch as um actively doing a task so she won't fill anything up anymore it is freaking awesome let's throw these on there how did i end up with not enough wood oh stone no it's over there okay that makes more sense all right and then throw these on there and take this stone out and i don't understand how stone is not as heavy as wood all right, and that should be our house, pretty much built. I think I might throw a couple more walls on the inside, but... Oh, see that? We have a nice porch. I love how much it blocks out the sound of rain. That's really cool. Um, but where we can watch the ocean, we're protected from rain. I'll put some chairs or something out there. And then we have the inside here. Don't worry, I'm going to block this off. It looks kind of cheap right now because it's just some wooden stairs, but um, aesthetically, I wanted it to be wood um, because I can build underneath wooden stairs. I'll show you guys real quick. You can't really do that with the stone stairs because they count as like the whole block if that makes sense. Let's clear that off. All right and then we'll have like a little crafting area over here. 
uh, in all of our windows where we can see everything. Let's check out upstairs. All right, very similar situation. Once we have some rails, I'll put them around here so you don't just like fall off or whatever. But we can see in all directions of our house. We can see out to the ocean and then we'll have a nice little balcony area out here to really enjoy enjoy our little i'm gonna make this like maybe a garden i don't know what i'm gonna do but it's gonna be cool all right um oh this is what i'm gonna do this over here is gonna be our bedroom so i need to mm, i guess i'll use stone i need to throw up a stone Ooh. i want that place oh it's because i don't have the two-story we'll wait to put the door until i can until i can do pillars because what it is is it's not reading anything under here so i can't stack that door up there but we'll do it later all right, let's bring in our stuff out of the rain here. Oh, what I am going to do real fast is throw some more stairs. Oh, gosh, I didn't mean to grab all those. Whatever. All right. But that way it, it just looks a little bit more complete. Hopping over into our, our safe zone. All right, let us... What do we want to take? Let's do the bed first. And remember, if you have the build menu open, just hit R and it'll automatically let you move it. And I don't think there's like any limit on the distance you can move it. There's our bed roll. I should probably really throw some doors on here. Um, I gotta get creative with spacing. All right, we need a place to do sewing. I think we'll make like this our little sewing corner. All right, let's do this. We're just gonna move everything closer so I'm not having to make such long trips. You see how easy it is like just to relocate everything? It feels like I'm spring cleaning and I <laughs> took all the furniture out of the house or something. Oh, I also built this this light, which will help with crafting indoors. All right, so we'll go ahead with this one. So I'm gonna make this area over here like my crafting or my like sewing and magical crafting space with for like my potions and just everything everything magical and of course we're gonna like this is our starter base right like we're gonna make a bigger one um that really allows for like expanding our crafting and everything but this is just to kind of like you know get us started all right this i want to test out because i technically want it out here on the porch Okay. Inspect. Okay, it counts as sheltered, so we're good. We can have crafting stations out here, no problem. All right, let's go ahead and put our rock crusher thing there. And I guess it makes sense. Well, honestly, I like the sounds of woodworking. So we're going to put that inside for now, but once we actually, you know, like get furniture or whatnot, we may move it outside. All right, we need our upgrade bench real quick. Uh, how do I want how do I want to lay this out? Oh my goodness, get rid of my get rid of my umbrella. It's blocking my view. All right, let's try this again. I think what I'm gonna do is like kind of make this. Yeah, there we go. We'll put those two just like that. And then, oh, our smelter, I almost forgot. I think it really makes sense for this to be outside. I'm gonna need more than one though, to be efficient. All right, let's go ahead and move our lamp in here. For now, we're gonna put it um, somewhere in this corner. That way, all these, cause it's hitting all these crafting benches, so they're well lit and that'll kind of help them with time. Because uh, the more bonuses or buffs, I guess you could say, your, um, I guess we're going to make under the stairs the kitchen. Um, but the, the more buffs that your crafting stations have, the more benefits they get. Like, it'll really cut down on uh, time it takes to craft items by a good chunk. All right, uh, let's put that in there for now. And then I'll be right back. I'm going to move all these chests inside. All right, I got everything moved into the house. So you can see the only thing I have left is this chest here. 
Um, but this is basically our drop weight chest. So when we fast travel home, if we're way over encumbered, we can just drop resources in there. And then we can just pick up and move the chest with us to kind of bring them inside to our storage area. Super handy dandy. All right, so um, I was going to kind of recap everything we did in that last episode that I messed up. But this is episode 10, so we've got to do something exciting, right? So what we're going to do is go and unlock our Astrolabe card, which is the current chest or chest quest that we are on. Um, and so basically we got that after we completed, well, we got our gear score to whatever we're at these days. What are, where are we at? Okay, I think it was maybe 30. We got our gear score to 30 maybe. Um, and then that unlocked the quest to unlock the new card, which will bring us to a whole new uh, tier of biomes that we can kind of explore and have fun with. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I crafted us up some food. Uh, one thing I've been horrible about, you can stack food buffs up to three. So make sure you have a variety of three different foods that'll give you the most health for your buck. Um, and then also, I did not even realize this was an option. You know how we have healing potions or healing salves? You can put them in this Q over here and you don't even have to switch to your offhand to use it. You just tap Q. I don't I don't know how I <laughs> I don't know how we've gone this far and all this fighting and I never even realized that. Um okay. So that's there. Oh, one thing I was going to also do is uh let's show you the build menu. We're going to build a fairy ring. Because I think the astrolabe's kind of far. So a fairy ring is basically your respawn point. Uh, I did not look at what I needed there. So I need one synchronous lotus. We got that. So I just need four wood and four stone blocks. Boom, boom, boom. Four. And then four stone blocks. Boom. Okay, so now we won't have to, like, make a whole trek uh, to come... Fairy Sages begin. Oh, yeah. Jeez Louise. That is far. Okay. Well, we're going to have an adventure. Well, it's nighttime, but this is the... This is the Abeyance Realm. We'll be all right. Oh, we should rest before we head out. I'm horrible about remembering that until I'm halfway there and I'm dog-tired and I have no stamina left. Okay. All right. That should get us nice and full, and we're going to head out. We'll get to see the realm at night... Maybe fight some bound on the way to keep it interesting. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. Okay, so you guys, you see how at the bottom... Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, where our food is. Oh, that one. That one was already dead. Oh. I'm telling y'all, after that first time we were, like, in a hide drought... I, I just can't let myself leave it behind anymore. All right, but anyways, you see the food bar of it. There's Edith doing her thing. Um, you see the food bar down there where it's got like five minutes left. So that gives our health all the way up to 183. But if I were to go ahead and stack it, right? So it's gonna give us even more health. And then if I stack it a third time, so we have three active food buffs, it's gonna increase our health by a good chunk. Come on, Edith, stop deforesting the place. We're gonna make Moose Daddy angry. Let's go. All right, um, but yeah, so you can keep those like stacked and then you'll have like much more health. Oh crap, hold on, I'm gonna fast travel back. There's a weapon that we have been sleeping on this whole freaking time. And that is what you're supposed to use to fight automatons. Learn that on Reddit today too. Uh, because it is way, way better. It's also really good for sword boys. Because you know like how they're like so fast. But if you hit them like outside of an animation, it staggers them like crazy. It's so awesome. Anyway, it's called the mall. Um, where on earth did I put our freaking crafting bench? I know I have a, I have to have a crafting bench to have all this stuff. Oh lord. Well, it's not down there. Maybe I put it up here somewhere. Uh, Sage has lost the crafting bench. That's sewing. That's upgrade. Cards. Thread. Food. Wood. Okay. I legitimately lost. How is that even possible? Is it out here somewhere? I 
I don't get it, guys. Okay, we're gonna build another one, whatever. Uh, crafting bench. See, I know this has got to be somewhere, and I just, like, don't remember whatsoever where I put it. Watch me find it while I'm putting this down. All right, we'll put it right here. All right, need 10 wood and four fiber. Oh, that's easy peasy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take 14. I'll just take the fiber, but I'm also gonna need a few more stones. Uh, cause I'm gonna try and craft this weapon while we, while we're at it. And I still want enough for a fairy ring. All right, let's see. Mall. Oh crap, I need straps. Hold on. Let's... Where did I put that? Okay. Let's get uh, some more straps. While that's doing, I'm going to refill this fire. Huh. Where's my shift button? Shift and split. Okay, whatever. There we go. Wait, I don't know. What am I doing? I'm not putting what in there. Okay, come on, Sage. Get it together. Let's go. Uh, okay, there it is. Mall. Here we go. Alright. Now this bad boy swings hella slow. But, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it too while we're at it. Um, but it does hella damage. So, it is worth it. The stagger alone, even though, like, that makes it like slow uh, swing hit rate is that what we call it it's slow hit rate makes it worth it because it staggers so well um in my opinion anyway all right now we're green we are good to go we're okay inventory wise we have everything we need for our fairy ring let's get back on the road all right, that only took like, what, a minute or two? That wasn't too bad. And now we're well equ equipped, because this is gonna be, I've done this dungeon before, and if it's the one I'm remembering, um, the automaton battle on the top can be very tricky. I may or may not have fallen to my death once, twice, or thrice. All right, what do we got out here? Oh, we have more wolves. I can guess, I guess I can kind of show you guys the, Damage it does. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Apparently, wolves are resistant to blunt. Alright. Uh, we're gonna leave those. Oh, one other thing I learned that we should have been doing this whole time. And get behind this wall and all. Oh, just kidding. This wall, and I'll show you guys. Alright, so you know how we like... <gasps> what is this? Maleficient Apogean card. Play this card to plunge a realm into eternal night, greatly increasing the yield of the balance resources, but dealing consistent damage to you over time. Interesting. I don't know why you would want to do that. All right, so you take all your items out of here. Excuse Edith back there. But make sure you guys are breaking down these chests. Because you get, t like, good stuff. You get gilded lumber carved wood and a hinge out of those like I didn't even realize you could break those and then I was playing like you know off camera uh, with a friend and uh, he did it and I was like what and so we ran around first and open all the chests all right I think this is our spot up here oh goodness come on Well, I guess that works. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is our dungeon up here. You guys will get to see the fairy ring. It's super cool. I love the, like, the dedication to the design that the devs have done for this game. Like, it's just a respawn point. They could have really skimped out on that. Is this not... Oh, no, that's the herbarium one. I don't even remember the astrolabe now. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll keep going. Uh, but anyways, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, the attention to detail. The fact that, like, something as simple as a respawn point, which they could have released, like, they could have done a cheap crystal that you plopped on the ground, and ooh, you spawn there. Like, when you guys see it, you'll see what I mean. 
Um, now I know everyone's, oh, y'all know what time it is. Hope Echo. I know everyone's experience with this game is going to be different depending on how you can run it, you know, with graphics and resolution and all that. Um, one of the reasons I am taking the time to upload it in 4k for you guys is because, um, I myself enjoyed, you know, being able to watch a beautiful game before I could actually, you know, have, you know, have it play on my own computer. Um, and I wanted, I wanted you guys to be able to have that because it doesn't look like there's much 4k out there. It's predominantly, uh, everyone's streaming the game, which is, you know, what we do nowadays. Um, which is okay. I just thought it would be cool to have, you know, a high fidelity. Let's play. Anyway, off my soapbox, let's, let's read this Hope Echo real quick. I knew she was going to do that. Right on top of me, Edith. Come on, girl. Get it together. All right. So this is, um, oh, this is from our original series here. Okay. The Veil Between Us. I don't remember if I told you guys, but I came to the realization that Simbungan is the location. It's not a person. This whole time we thought Sam was writing letters. No, that's where they were at. All right. So this one is November 10th, 1889. Reflections from the World's End series. Telegrams tell tales of more cities perishing one by one. After Paris, it was Brussels, then Milan. A horrid fog called the Pell billows forth from the portal in Paris. We have known of the Pell, but something has shifted, changed from what it once was. Whereas before the Pell was small tendrils stretching out just beyond the portal before dissipating, it now spreads across the earth, blanketing everything in its path. Sambungan is far from Paris. See, it's a place. But... If the pale continues as it has, it will ultimately reach us. Those who stay scrutinize our portal. Others avoid it altogether. There are talks of fleeing the city, finding safety away from the portals, if such a place were to even still exist. Look at that. Hold on. I want to look at our, our entries. Uh, it would be Tales. Oh, the Veil Between Us. Paris is lost. Yeah, see, I thought we had already read some where, like... Okay, so we must have got... We must have missed that one. So that one was, like, earlier in the series we were reading. Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, there's the astrolabe over there. All right, we're going to let those pigs live. we got things to do. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna get across this lake. Oh, the moon, I freaking love the moon. Oh guys, I've been looking at screenshots. I'm, if you guys are into this game and, and you're on the Discord at all or, or Reddit, I'm sure you've seen them too. But uh, the deserts, oh look, at, oh, God, like, just look at it. You got freaking planetoids, the moon rings around us more planets oh it's just so epic but um the deserts have the prettiest or i don't know i've seen some cool ones in swamps too but i haven't been to a swamp a lot um but the deserts to me have the most beautiful um freaking moons man like i I, w I saw one that was like a um it's like the shape of a moon right but it's like it looks like a portal to like a gas giant or something behind it it's so awesome Oh, okay, look, I was gonna let you live. Y'all decided to get feisty. Yeah, if you're quite done, sir. Alright, so we've gotta get. We've gotta get down there. Let's get our, uh. Umbrella. Alright, we're gonna go in right here. All right, so before we go in, we're gonna go ahead and build. Yo, look at that. All right, I think I got the screen before Edith got in there, but we're gonna go ahead and build our fairy ring here. So if we die at any point in here, we've got it. All right, this is what I was talking about. Look at the detail on this thing. Damn it, Edith. Oh, she likes it. But it's like a, like it's got the magical effects, like that spiral, the sound. God, this game is so freaking beautiful. All right, let's go, Edith. 
All right, so you guys know the drill. This is going to be a dungeon. I'm having some frame drops. Um, we're going to have some people spawn in. We're going to fight them. Then we're going to hit the hit the lore bits. All right, come on, you death. Oh, I need to eat my food. It's a good thing they don't spawn right away. Oh, I forgot about those little wizard things. Damn, that's loud. Listen, Pepper. I hit you. I know I did. Oh, shit. I do not want to aggro everything down there. Oh, yeah, let's get this mall thing I was telling you all about. Alright, she's dead. Ugh! I cannot see for shit. We should have not have done this at night. All right, I think we're okay now. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and... What the hell are you hitting, Edith? There's no trees in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and read this for us. On the obsolescence of fey machinery, Charles Babbage, chapter one, there exists perhaps no single circumstance which distinguishes the calcularia more remarkably from all other factions than the vast extent and perfection to which we have carried the contrivance of tools and machines for replicating fake constructs. The amount of patient thought, of repeated experiment, of happy exertion of genius, by which our manufacturers have been created and carried manufacturers have been cre created and carried to their present excellence is scarcely to be imagined i don't that was a horrible sentence um if we look to the city we inhabit or to the asterarium and fourth transept we shall find in the history of each gear and cog a series of failures which have gradually led the way to excellence and we shall notice in the art of making even the most insignificant of them processes calculated to excite our admiration to prove our superiority to the outdated methods of the fae jeez i think this guy likes to hear himself talk and that's just a guess all right so we're gonna go up here kill these guys because they're gonna drop some loot for us our real goal's down but i want to clear it out and make sure we don't miss any lore Oh, I can show you guys with the sword guys. Oh no, it's a double sword guy. Shit. Ooh. But you see that stagger is real. Oh shit, that almost killed me. Edith, you okay up there? I can't see shit. Oh my god, he's behind me the whole time. Ah! Where did she come from? All right. Well, I guess we won't we won't be doing any more of these at night. This is insane. I can't see anything in here. I just want to make sure there's no loot. Sometimes I think. Well, I don't. I say sometimes. I think there's always a chest up here. So if you want to get up to the chest or the place where the chest can spawn, come over here to this side. It's like right as you come up those stairs. Just head straight. And then do your double jump. Don't make a liar out of me. There we go. You know what probably help if I had a freaking torch? Do I even have torches? Let's craft one. Uh, only craftable. Are we being serious? Oh. All right, let's try that again. What the hell? Torch. Give me my torch. I guess I don't have what I need. Alright, we're just gonna, like, wing it. I'm so sorry it's dark to start, guys. Yeah, there's the chest. Alright, we're gonna take our potions. Down a little bit. Oh, shit, we're way down. Alright. Not even gonna lie, guy. I'm gonna extra... Guys, I'm gonna extract some stuff. All right. 
All right, let's head down. I'm hoping that since like we get underground that it'll be a little bit more, you know, well lit. Cause right here we're very exposed to the outside. And so like, I feel like it's pulling in the, the lighting palette from out there. I also didn't see any lore notes, so I guess they're down here. Come here, sword boy. I'm not scared of you anymore. See? It takes all the fear out of those guys. I mean, it's kind of OP, to be honest with you guys. Alright, where did, uh, where did the witch go? Where's she at, Edith? I know you got those spidey senses. Oh, I see her. I see her little head over there. Oh, shit. Damn, near took my stuff off. Oh shit. Oh, there's so many of them. Alright, we had to step back. Edith, now be careful. It's is crazy times down here. To be honest with you, I don't know if I like how easy the mall makes everything. Because I, I like being maneuverable. Alright, we have another uh, hope echo real quick. Let's read it. Chapter 2. The acquisition of knowledge once unfathomable is the first advantage of calcularian advancements in machinery. So extensive and important is the effect that we might, if we were inclined to generalize, embrace both advantages under this single head, both advantages under this single head. However, we shall restrict our illustrations upon this point. As an example of knowledge unfathomable, why can I not say that word? Uh, the superiority of the astrarium to the observatories of the astrolabe realms may be noticed. The court of Empyrean spent millennia constructing ob observatories in pursuit of the study of the realmic space. Yet Hook and Newton constructed the astrarium in but 19 years, and Lovelace deciphered its outputs in mere months. Humanity can now pinpoint concentrations of ether, chart shifting pathways through the realms, surpass a Fey Prince's portal magic, which could not, even with the best tools, be accomplished by lesser Fey means. Hmm. So this sounds like that arrogance that those red cross knights in our first dungeon were meant to be stopping. I don't know what happened to those guys. They went out of fashion or what, but... Oh, here, we're at the dungeon. Um, clearly, that prophecy they were talking about might have been real. All right, let's hit our last uh, hope echo, and then we'll fight the automaton. All right, let's go. All right, section two, chapter... Darn, 13. Um, of additions to human power, with consideration of the first advantage of knowledge unfathomable, human power derives from the combining of knowledge with what the lesser educated deem magic, but what the calcularia knows to be the practical and tangible results of natural law and science. At each increase of knowledge, as well as on the contrivance of every new machine that puts that knowledge into practice, human power becomes augmented. The Empyrean who contrived the astrolabe observatories invented a machine by which his power was quintupled. With the astrarium, we have decoupled it. So quintessential is this advantage that we might posit with near certainty that our power will surpass that of Fey in but a few decades. Through invention and machinery, the calcularia will see us render the entire archives of Fey obsolete. Oh yeah, this Charles Babbage is problem. He's a problem. A problem and a half. He caused the pale. I'm convinced of it. And this Calcularia. And then the Fae showed us and destroyed our whole freaking planet because of it. We'll see what happens, you know, later down the road. But anyway, come on, Edith. We're going to fight this machine. Make ourselves feel better. Maybe. Oh, shoot. I guess I'm... Some little guys. What was that? They have freaking shields? Uh huh, Edith. Get out of that corner and come help me. This isn't our first rodeo, girl. Come on. 
finally. Oh god, he's about to kill me. I don't know why these guys were. Which one does he have a gun? Stop shooting me. Alright, go for it, Edith. I should have gave her a maul, too. Oh, hell no. But you see how much damage it freaking does? And also, the healing potion being on Q. It has a slight cooldown, but it is so much more convenient. But did y'all see how easy that was? Instead of trying to aim that little pickaxe that it's hard every time, you just wail on it with a hammer. It's delicate gears, can't handle it. All right, let's get our uh, astrolabe guard. Diving even further, astrolabe, heavenly bodies. All right. So we didn't get a quest for it, but now we can, uh, we can go explore the astrolabe places and see what other kind of resources we can find and build up our home. All right, let's travel back um, to Respite. Oh, God, just look at the beauty. Listen to the ocean waves. All right, hey, Edith. So at least we get to see the moon from part of our house. Let's go upstairs and look. Yeah, we can look out and see it. It's still beautiful. All right, so, um, one, I'm going to adjust my settings so that, uh, the darkness is a little bit better but we're gonna go ahead and call it an episode here guys it has been an absolute blast i hope you guys enjoyed it um it was a uh, not i don't i don't know i think episode eight was probably the most fun we've had so far um, but this one wasn't too bad for an episode 10 we did do a whole dungeon and we're gonna check out a new tier of biomes in the next one thank you guys for joining us sage and edith i'll catch you in the next one later guys